Hello and welcome back to The Red Path. Today we're going to discuss secondary objectives and how to pick them for your world eaters. Okay, so 9th edition is well underway now and hopefully we've all been able to safely experience it, whether through appropriate in-person gaming, tabletop simulator, or by watching battle reports online. Regardless, one thing should be clear. Secondary objectives account for almost half the points needed to win. In short, secondary objectives are an homage to an iteration from the old ITC mission packs, where players would pick particular objectives on a battle-by-battle -battle basis, selecting based off of their own army strengths or their opponent's weaknesses. Similarly, Secondary objectives in 9th are picked in the pre-game phase of 40k battles and are used to maximise your own efficiency, or capitalise on any lack thereof in your opponent's list. Whilst the GW variation of secondaries is somewhat more limited and restrictive than the ITC incarnation, it bodes well for future 40k as secondary missions offer a balanced and skilled way of adding variation to a static rule set. That being said, codex-specific secondaries appear to be adding some tangible spice into the mix. If you watched my interview with Victor Schuberg, you may remember his words on the difficulty in picking secondaries for World Eaters. I'm not sure I have all the answers for you, but I'm going to try and break down how to pick them based on currently perceived strengths from our desired playstyle. Victor's secondary use mirrored my own in competitive play, and from the information I've managed to glean from combat-focused players, there seems to be a common trend for armies like ours. First off, engage on all fronts. This one is as close to a no-brainer as we get. World Eaters need to move up the board. We don't castle, we charge. Remember that scene in Betrayer where the legionaries become lost to the nails against the Ultramarine gunline? They're cut down en masse as they rampage towards the disciplined loyalists. And it just looks like a setup for a typical militaristic proto-fascist jerk session. But then Khan utters the words, our turn. That's us in a nutshell. We have to withstand that withering fire because our strength is where the metal meets the meat. And to get there, we have to move across the battlefield. And if we're moving across the battlefield, we may as well score some damn points in the meantime. Adding to this the availability of cheap camper units like cultists or spawn, and access to fast infantry like raptors, as well as effective cheap flyers in the Helldrake and our reliance on armoured transports, it's a secondary we will almost always be able to capitalise on. Once our shock troops disembark, our rhinos and secondary units are mostly ignored for a turn or two, allowing them time to hide in different table areas, ensuring we can continue to score points, as well as piling skulls. Let's take a look at some of the potential on turn 1. Looking at the deployment map for sweep and clear, gaining 3 of the quadrants will be incredibly simple. Moving a rhino onto either flank and keeping one unit in your own DZ will automatically net you 2 points at the end of your turn. But by spending a CP and using Apoplectic Frenzy on a unit of Raptors so they can move 12 inches from anywhere in the green zone shown, they should be able to safely move during your movement phase into the fourth quadrant and help you net all three VPs for that turn. Bear in mind that for two CP you could use Tide of Traitors once per battle to move a unit of cultists, returning them to full strength, within six inches of a battlefield edge and more than nine inches away from enemy models at any point during the game. A solid second choice is deploy scramblers or potentially raise the banners, depending on your list and the mission you're playing. Deploy scramblers is a very easy 10 points to score. Raptors with apoplectic frenzy can achieve enemy DZ deployment in turn 1. Cultists can tie the traitors there turn 1 as well. And frankly one unit of cultists can likely score all 3 sub actions over the turns if positioned well. Other options include the apostles acolytes or even a squad of berserkers hiding in wait for a counter charge. Raise the Banners requires a little more planning and cerebral input, but the point remains the same. We have access to fairly cheap infantry units that can move reasonably quickly, covering ground, as these units will also help us score engage on all fronts and potentially primary points, there's little downside to these action based secondaries if you can manage to remember to perform them each turn. And here's where it gets tricky, picking a third secondary. This is going to depend on 1. Your list, 2. Your opponent's list, and 3. The mission. I'm going to give you my thoughts on which you should familiarise yourself with and when best to use them. As you've almost certainly picked from the Battlefield Supremacy and Shadow Operations categories, that marks them off the list for a potential third choice. So we're left with one option from a No Mercy No Respite, which are objectives for either destroying a lot of models, 
thin their ranks, the old kill more, grind them down, or protecting three high value units of your own, while we stand we fight. As world eaters I don't see many opportunities for while we stand we fight to be honest, as we tend to like to sink our points into combat effectiveness. Thin their ranks may be occasionally useful if facing a severe horde army, say a Tyranid bug spam list, and grind them down can also work if the opponent brings a numerous but less lethal list, say Nurgle Demons, but I'm still not convinced these are optimal choices. The Purge the Enemy category offers us Titan Hunter, which is going to be a no brainer against Knight lists, and generally a solid choice against any list that has at least one Titanic model, as you'll definitely be wanting to kill it. Bring it down, kill monsters and vehicles, Another solid choice against an armoured opponent, cut off the head is for killing the warlord and 99% of the time do not choose this. Unless your opponent's warlord is easily targetable on turn 1, for instance a knight, even then they can easily put that unit in reserves and reduce your victory points each turn. Similarly, assassinate is often a poor choice as otherwise easy to kill characters, those with low toughness and high saves, can be placed into reserves or hidden. Generally, Titan Hunter and Bring It Down may be usable options from this category. Finally, we have Warpcraft, and in a pure World Eaters list, there's only one option, literally. Abhor the Witch, which you should almost certainly consider if facing a Psyker Heavy Army. It's probably an auto-take against a Thousand Suns or Grey Knights, but well worth considering if your opponent has more than three Psykers, Eldari and Tyranids being particularly generous with their Sorceress targets. So from these categories, you are able to select Abhor the Witch, Thin their ranks or grind them down. Titan Hunter or bring it down. That offers 5 selections for your third secondary and in many cases shouldn't be a tough choice. Facing Psychers, deny the witch. Facing Knights, Titan Hunter. Facing an Imperial Guard tank list, bring it down. You get the idea. But sometimes no obvious choice will present itself and this is where your familiarity with your list will come into play. If your opponent has 120 models, you could score 12 points for thin their ranks. But if 5 of those models are tanks or monsters with wounds of 10 or less, you could also score 10 victory points for killing those. Which are you more likely to get? Do you have a lot of high volume low AP attacks? Do you have a decent amount of anti-tank firepower on your land raiders? It may be easier to quickly score 10 VP off of the monsters and then focus on primaries rather than sending berserkers all over the field to cut down inconsequential bugs. I will make a video dedicated to how to build your list, and what you should be thinking about when doing so, but as a rule of thumb you should be able to handle just about anything. Berserkers can do a lot, but they can't do it all, not competitively. So consider the situation where that third secondary isn't an easy choice. You're going to have to settle for suboptimal points. What can you get? Okay. So that's this one wrapped up, I hope I helped you learn a little something in how to effectively choose your secondary points. I will be covering this and other competitive aspects of the game in more detail as time goes on. I'd appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. If you enjoyed the video leave a thumbs up, if you didn't leave a thumbs down. And do check out the Red Path Facebook page. As ever, stay healthy, stay safe, and kill me in the